Hi, I'm Debbie. And I'm Tim. Welcome to Vintage Food Farm, or should I say, welcome to Ta Prom Temple in the Anchor Complex in Cambodia. So we're just about to go into Ta Prom, but we're going to get something cold to drink first in this beautiful restaurant area. No, thank you. <laughs> too many, too many. I couldn't, thank you. Today is okay. <laughs> so this is a really lovely little restaurant area. It's nice and cool. There's a fan, there's foods, there's drinks. Really, really lovely and clean and local. I love it when you find places like this out in the middle of the Cambodian temples. They've got lots of little restaurants everywhere. It's really beautiful. So we are here at the restaurant at Taupong and we have ordered our lunch and I'll show you what we're getting. We are getting a pork sandwich, which is like a bun mi. What's the Cambodian word for it? Nam, nam chun, nam ching, nam. So the so the pork roll, which is like a Vietnamese bun mi, is called lum pang. And some fried chicken, and a soda water, and an anchor beer. And I think Tim got an iced coffee. You want not this? Yes, thank you. You want some kala or lemon? No, 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 that's okay. okay. Thank you very much. So there's heaps of people selling heaps of souvenirs here. So if you haven't got your souvenirs yet, you can get tons of stuff here. We already bought some. We bought a drum. Um, we bought a few musical instruments a few years ago, so we don't need anything now. We certainly don't need any scarves or t-shirts, but if you're in the market, this is the place to come. So there's two sorts of um, chicken. When you order fried chicken, there's two sorts of chicken it could end up being. It could be the farmed larger chicken or the skinny um, bush chicken, the Cambodian chicken. And I really hope it's the tougher, skinnier Cambodian chicken because it is amazing. Oh, uh, what's, the, what's the Khmer word for this sandwich? For this one, the Khmer sandwich is Nampang uh, Sai. Nampang site. Yeah. Nampang site. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Akun. Me and Uncle. Also, the Adam had the Uncle only Cambodian, but around here is no fun. Okay, I'll just get this one okay, then. Okay, thank you. Thank you. So we got the Cambodian pork roll, which is called Num Pang, and we got some fried chicken, which is always good. Hopefully it's the skinny Cambodian chicken and not the fat farmed chicken. And we also got a soda water and an iced coffee. So how much was the iced coffee? Two dollars. Two dollars for the iced coffee, one dollar for the soda water, four dollars for the Num Pang. Fried chicken is five dollars. So not the cheapest place for local food, but where you are, it's not too bad at all. Yeah, 
This chicken is looking for food that people are dropping on the ground. He's a smart chicken. Well, she's a smart chicken. So because there was a massive storm yesterday afternoon, there's so many bugs and butterflies and moths and everything out, but it's really pretty, except I think they're eating the clothes. So the feel of the restaurants and the local stalls around each of the temples is really different. Um, this one, there's so much musical instruments and uh, different statues and paintings and clothes. The people are really friendly and really nice. They'll bombard you when you first get here and then they will let you eat in peace, I think. I've ordered fried chicken as I said and they are actually chopping up the chicken as we speak um, so it is going to be very fresh fried chicken which it usually is so the lady has just explained to us that the fan above us has a solar panel um, a really simple one and when the sun gets stronger the fan goes faster and when the sun gets weaker the fan slows down so that is a pretty cool organization for your solar fan thank you so this is tim's pork roll and i've got to say it looks almost like a lock yeah. pork roll so we'll see what it tastes like she's also bought the soy sauce and the chili sauce to go on it and some nice clean cutlery so it looks like it's got herbs and onion and lettuce and pork and there's definitely some gravy action happening in there and a lot of garlic i can smell it the soy Really? Really, really wonderful. So I was a little bit sceptical about the gravy sauce, the garlic gravy sauce, but Tim is saying it is amazing, so I'm going to try it. So there's pork and lettuce and onion and cucumber. So I've got a touch of soy sauce. Cheers. Cambodian sandwich. Ooh, thank you so much. And look, our chicken has just arrived. Beautiful. Thank you so much. No, that's okay. Thank you. So I'm going to try this pork roll. Mm. Fantastic. It's got a heap of raw onion. It's got cucumber. It's got a really garlicky pork. Um, and then the soy sauce and some herbs. Absolutely fantastic. I love it. So this is my fried chicken and it looks fantastic and then there's the obligatory sweet chili dipping sauce. I eat fried chicken in every single country because I just love it. It's one of the real, um, it's a really reliable food that if you don't know what else to get, fried chicken's the way to go. So I know this is going to be absolutely boiling hot. Oh yeah, it is. Cheers. Oh wow. This is fantastic.
This is seriously some of the freshest, tastiest fried chicken I have ever had in my life. It is fantastic. Where are we? We need to be able to recommend this place. So good. So this is the Sri Mao number 15 restaurant. Just there. And they do really great fried chicken and a really great um, Cambodian pork sandwich. So highly recommend those if you come to Taprom Temple. This um, pork sandwich, Cambodian pork sandwich, the baguette is really, really fresh and really crispy on the outside and really soft on the inside. And then the pork has so much flavor. And then that is set against the beautiful, fresh, crispy cu um, cucumber and lettuce and herbs and heaps of raw onion. And it really, really works well. It's amazing. So I'm going to make a call here and I'm going to say that the food at the Ta Prom Temple is significantly better than the food at Angkor Wat. So if you are doing the three temples in a day, um, or if you're doing Ta Prom and Angkor Wat in one day, make sure you eat at Ta Prom. Hello? Hello? What you doing, hey? What you doing? I'm sorry. I've only got a serviette. I would give you the bones, but I mightn't be allowed. <laughs> Sit. Sit. Is that good? So we'll just get our bill and then we are going to go to the Ta Prom Temple. We are so excited. Every time I pick my serviette up and put it in the bed, the puppy gets it out again to eat it. Hello, little sweetness. Hello. You're a cute Cambodian pooch. <laughs> oh dear. Twelve dollars. That's very good. That's very good food. Very good. I'm sorry, sweetie. They'll feed you if they want to. Thank you. Akuncharan. Sri Mao. Sri Mao restaurant number 15. Sri Mao. Sri Mao restaurant. Oh, is it Mao number two? <laughs> okay, okay, so it's Sri Mao restaurant number 15, except now it's number two. See you later, little friend. Have a nice day. Dog <laughs> is following us because he wants to come and live with us in Australia. What I love about the temples too is there's heaps of Cambodian locals here, um, which makes it a really nice feel. So we are now in Ta Prong, and Jerry Varman the seventh bought, built this temple in honor of his mother. And this is actually the Tomb Raider temple where Lara Croft came and did her stuff. Um, and there's a lot of references to Tomb Raider every time you come here. Um, but I'm going to suggest that the history <laughs> is a bit bigger than Tomb Raider, but still an interesting fact. And when we first came here years and years ago, um, there were no cordoned off areas or barricades or signs. We literally walked all over this place. Um, so it is becoming more restricted, but that is a fantastic thing because otherwise tourism is going to wear this place down. I think I might be saying this about every temple, but Ta Prom is absolutely beautiful. Just look at this place. 
So beautiful. I think the thing that really spins me out the most about this place is you think about it as a group of temples, as a religious site, but when you go a little bit further and you think about it as a major metropolis, bigger than the size of New York today or Paris today, with nearly a million people living in it, working and building and growing rice and carving and you know dancing and cooking and cleaning um, they had roads they all of their houses had swimming ponds out the back it was really civilized it was the biggest it was the biggest city in the world at that time the biggest metropolis they had um, irrigation where they built uh, reservoirs and they built channels of water so that they could grow their rice and um, and bring water to the houses. They had hospitals, they had rest stops. Um, Jerry Varman the seventh built hospitals and rest stops along the road for the people and respite centres. Um, just you know, like a really sophisticated city um, and an amazing accomplishment for that time. The Cam the Khmer people used to rule most of Vietnam, Thailand and Laos. And it was only in later years um, that the Vietnamese took over Vietnam, the Thai people took over Siam, um, and the Lao people took over Laos. Before that, it was all mostly Cambodian or Khmer. So there are about 72 temples in this whole complex that are the main temples, the larger temples. There are many, many, many more. Um, there is also a royal palace, which is really interesting, and it was built by Suryavarman I, and it had royal families living in it for the next 500 years. So he built that in the 11th century, and the royal families lived there for 500 years after the 11th century. So really, really so much history. If you want to get a really good understanding of the total history of Cambodia um, from the ancient Anchor times up until the um, genocide with the Khmer Rouge, there is a podcast which is fantastic, which is called In the Shadows of Utopia. Um, I listened to it on Audible, but I think you'd be able to get it on a lot of um, podcast sites um, and it just gives you an absolutely incredible insight into the history of this amazing place. So although being enormous, um, the Tarprom temple is much less um, high, it's, it's a lower scale than the others. So all of these walkways have uh, just been put here in recent years and they're doing what looks like a lot of restoration on this place. So beautiful. A good thing to know is it's also one of the temperature-wise coolest of all the temples. Look at all the moss. And there's a lot of scaffolding around here. Like this stuff's trying to hold this wall up. It's incredible to be here and to see the stone and to touch the stone and to walk on the paths where you couldn't even imagine who has walked on. There would have been kings and queens and princes and princesses and, and wives and concubines and cleaners and um, chefs and cooks and dancers and doctors and, and monks and it just is an incredible place to come to.
it seems to me that different people like different things about the temples and some people prefer Angkor Wat because it is more restored um, but this is just beautiful this is so beautiful all this scaffolding is holding up this part of the temple so you can see how much work it needs they're starting to cut down some of the trees that are really really destructive wow look at all this stone that will one day be put back into place This is one of the most beautiful places in the world. I can't believe how peaceful it is as well. I'm the only one out here. Um, this boardwalk goes around the outside um, and there's not that many people inside either. The trees and the roots of the trees are just stunningly beautiful, but it's sort of bittersweet because that is also what has helped um, to pull this temple apart. It's literally been eaten by the jungle. You can see they've got the numbers on the stone, which helps them to work out how to reassemble it. What a job. And each one of these pieces of stone has all of this carving, which has been there since like 1200. Seriously, it's insane. Old Jayavarman VII must have loved his mother. This is my favorite temple. I'm just gonna say it. So some of the trees have been cut down, sometimes because they are rotting, um, and other times because they're causing too much destruction, I believe. Look at the size of this tree. It just stops right there. So the scale of tar prom is um, lower. So it's very spread out, it's very beautiful, it's very impressive, there is nothing lesser about it. But all of the doors and the archways are much lower um, than at Bayonne or at Angkor Wat, which is really interesting. All of these ladies are called the Celestial Dancers. I was just listening to a tour guide that was taking around a group of Indian um, tourists and he is so sad and so devastated 
at how many of the statues, thousands and thousands and thousands have been stolen and looted. Um, so when you look in all these rooms, there's just the pedestals um, that they used to sit on. And a lot of those statues have gone to really significant um, museums around the world, like the Australian Museum and Sotheby's. So they've found statues in the UK, in the USA, everywhere. But it's a big battle for the Cambodian government to get all of those statues returned. If you do want to see more statues, they have a lot of statues at the Anchor Museum, um, and that's another really good reason to go there before you come to the temples. Um, and even if you go afterwards, just so that you get a really good understanding of this amazing place. That is incredible. You're not there. I mean, I'm there. I mean, I'm so that is it that is the Tar Prom Temple it was amazing if you feel like it and only if you feel like it like and subscribe but most importantly stay, stay calm, calm in the farm, farm. Thank you. Absolutely beautiful. Hello. Hello. Kuncha. Hi, I'm Debbie. And I'm Tim. Welcome. <laughs> it's like comparing your children um, and saying that you have a favourite when you really shouldn't. But Tarprom is my absolute favourite temple. By far. 